welcome back to another Pretty Ugly makeup tutorial. I thought today I would do my go-to autumn makeup look. Seeing as it's autumn and it's a bit different from makeup I would normally wear, I'm going to adapt it slightly for daytime and for evening. So to prep the skin, first of all, I've already used, just to save a bit of time, the, so I was sent some Armani products yesterday, so some of the products I'll be using today I have never used before. And the first one of those is the Armani Prima. This is their Glow On Moisturising Balm. So this is a skincare step. I have already put that on. So far, so good. It's definitely made my rosacea a little bit rosier, but we'll go with it for now. The second product I'm gonna be using is a primer. I always use a primer before foundation. This is another new product that I've never tried before. And this is also Armani, and it's their Day Long Skin Perfector. Um, so with primers I never put them on with, with brushes, I always put them on with my hands and kind of like warm them up first. And with a primer I just kind of press it in. And onto the neck as well. I always leave a primer just for kind of 30 seconds to just sink in a little bit before going in with foundation. Now again for foundation, this is a product I was sent yesterday. This is the third Armani product, this is their Luminous Silk Foundation, which is definitely an iconic product. I have never used it, um, but this is my shade. This is shade six. So I'm gonna try this as well. Hopefully I like this. Now with foundation, I tend to kind of roughly put it on with a brush like this. Now this is just also conveniently an Armani brush, but a really old one. Um, now I'm just going to put this on roughly with the brush and then I always pat it in with, with a beauty blender sponge. But because I want this look to be really dewy um, for autumn, I'm actually going to mix it with a little bit of the Armani Fluid Sheer. This is a highlighter but you can also mix it with foundation if you want extra, extra glow. So I'm just going to mix that on my hand. And then just very roughly apply this with the brush, just to kind of get it on your skin. And then I'm going to go in with the Beauty Blender. Now this is quite a yellow foundation, a yellow shade, sorry, which is great for me because I do have very pink skin, thanks to the rosacea. So I'm really not blending this at all with the brush. I'm just going in and kind of wiping it on. I think you, you use less doing it this way as well. I'm just kind of using what's on the brush. So this at this sort of phase, this should not look nice. I'm just getting it on my skin. And then I'm going in with my beauty blender and just patting this all in. Now, once you've done this, this is when your foundation should look nice. If it still doesn't, then you've done it wrong. You can apply a little bit more if, if there's some areas where you think you need a tiny bit more. I always apply slightly more just on my cheeks. And of course, if you have any redness or any spots, which I do, then apply a little bit more there as well. So once you've done foundation, which was the Armani Luminous Silk, which I think I'm a fan of, you can always go in and kind of touch up with the brush again but I do quite like that. Then I'm gonna go in with concealer. Now I know I'm doing this the other way around to some people. I know that some people like to do eyes first. I don't. I always like to get my face kind of perfect first so that I don't have to look at any spots or redness and then I start doing my eyes. Now this is a product I'm actually really loving at the moment and I only discovered it a couple of weeks ago. This is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. Now with this, I again start with a brush, just get a little bit on the end and I'm just kind of roughly putting this under the eye 
in a kind of triangle shape. And then I'm going in with my finger and just patting this all in. And this makes a big difference, I think, to under the eye area. It's just really glowing now, which I could do with at the moment. So yeah, you just pat that all in. And the same, either the same concealer, you wouldn't use this for spots, but whatever concealer you may be using, just go in and correct any spots that may need covering up. Now for my spot concealer, I'm actually using, this is a nude stick, and it's their concealer pencil in medium. Now this is amazing, and I actually got this in Space NK last week. I went in looking for something totally different, got chatting to the sales assistant, and she totally sold this concealer to me and it's the best purchase I've made, best beauty purchase I've made in a long time. It's really creamy, it doesn't seem to aggravate spots, you don't need a brush, you just paint it on and blend it in. It kind of sticks, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so yeah, big fan of nude sticks. Okay, so once you've got the base kind of done, which I think I have, then we're going to go on to eyes. I'm not going to do powder, bronzer, blusher, anything yet. I am going to start the eyes now. So, like I said, I'm going to do quite chocolatey browns, with maybe a little bit of berry in the eye. I'm not sure yet. I haven't even practiced this look, so we're just going to go with the flow. So, I'm going to start with, not that, I'm going to start with a primer. I think it's really good to apply a primer on your eyes just because it makes eyeshadows last longer but it also makes the colours pop out so much brighter. Now I'm using the, the Benefit Don't Stray for this and with this again I'm not going to use a separate brush, I'm just going to paint it on. You can go slightly under the eye with this as well. Just put it all over the eyelid. And then blend it in. Now you can either do this with a brush or with your finger. Um, I'm going to just do the, the actual lid with the brush. It just goes a bit smoother. But you really don't need to be neat with this. And this primer is actually great. It almost acts like a sort of second concealer. Um, just pat that all in with your finger. So once you've got your primer on, your eye primer, you then want to start with, if you're going to use cream shadows, then start with that, because they're the sheerer layer. So I'm actually going to start with another nude stick. This is their magnetic eye colour in Immortal. So I'm going to apply this just all over the lid, really roughly. And kind of just do it in the rough shape that you want it to be. Um, so sort of don't, don't go way over the socket line, don't wing it out too much. It just needs to be rough because you're going to blend all this with a brush. So then go in after and just kind of with circular movements, you just want to get rid of any harsh lines. So kind of smoke it around the edges. Can neaten this up after but this is kind of your first layer this is a really nice color I find for kind of for starting a like a smoky brown eye um, I mean you could start you could start a smoky black eye with this um, it just it's a really nice kind of soft tone you could wear this daytime or evening um, and you can build it up if you want to do more layers um, you know blend it do another layer blend it again um, go slightly under the eye with this as well, just under the lash line. And then you just blend that as well. The 
good thing with these is that they're really easy to use. You don't have to be a professional makeup artist to use any of these products. You don't need to be really precise because you're going to blend it all after with a brush anyway. So once you've done the cream, if you're doing any cream shadows, do that first, then go in with the next layer for shadow. Now I'm using the, this is the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani palette, which I love for daytime eyes. I kind of, I never use the bottom ones, as you can tell. I only really use kind of these three and this one I love. So I'm going to start with Zone, which is just a really nice kind of tan colour. Now, I always apply shadows with a brush like this and then blend them after. So, I'm just going to apply this to the lid. And again, you're just kind of getting this on. You're not blending with this brush at all. You're just wiping it, really, because you're going to blend after with a fluffy brush. So just apply as much as you like in the rough shape, in the rough shape, sorry, and underneath your eyes. And again, just blend that all out. Now I'm not really kind of winging this out and making it too smoky a look because I did really want this to be a daytime look. Um, it's probably a little bit more makeup than I would normally wear just for a, a standard day. Um, but I'm just kind of amping it up to show off, not show off, but to show it off to the camera. So once you've got the bulk of the colour on, I'm then going to go in with a darker shadow. So I'm going to go in with Punk just on the outer corners of the eye. Now this brush is a Zoeva and this is their 231 brush and I find this one really good if you're doing just darker shadowing on the corner. You kind of want to draw on the shape. And again, at this point it doesn't need to be perfect because you're going to go in and blend this after. I find it helps when getting the shape to actually do it with your eye open and kind of almost look directly at the mirror. So you can see, you know, what your eyes look like open and closed really. So again, that's got the rough shape. I'm then going to go in with a fluffy brush and just blend that. And apply just a little bit under the eye as well, just to make it all a bit more seamless. Your finger is probably the best tool, I think, for correcting any mistakes, because it's slightly damp always, especially when you're filming, because you get a little bit sweaty. It's just good for wiping off kind of any mistakes and correcting the shape slightly. So yeah, that's the shadows. So I've just used two shades from this palette and the cream eyeshadow. So the next step, whenever I do any sort of smoky eye, whether it's black or brown, I always line the waterline with a, this is a liquid eyeliner. Um, and I don't wing it out because I think that can be too much, especially for daytime. But I'm literally, this is actually a little trick because it just makes your lash line look so much fuller. You just want to keep the pen right, right into the lash line. So you're really not winging it out at all. You're just following the lash line all the way down. Do the other side as well. But just keeping it as close as you can. So it's, it's a really, really thin line. And do exactly the same on the other side. So you're almost... You almost want this to be undetectable. You don't really want people to see that you've got liquid eyeliner on. It's more to just give the illusion of a really, really full lash line. So, once you've done that, what you can then do, and I quite like to do, especially if I'm going from daytime to evening with the same makeup, just to amp it up a bit, I then go in with a cold. Now, this is actually a brown one. Um, 
I just find I prefer browns. I think our blacks can make, they, they just don't really go with my face. So with this, you're just following the same sort of line as the liquid liner, but you're making it slightly thicker. And this kind of does smoke it out a bit and just make it a little bit more dramatic. You can do a little bit of this underneath the eye as well. And then you are going to go in with a brush and just smudge this slightly. Now this one I'm using a spectrum brush but it doesn't say which one it is. And I'm just going to go in and mess up that line a little bit. I don't really ever like my makeup to be too perfect, you know, just in, insofar as eye makeup or, or lipstick, it's always, I'm always slightly smudging it. So what you can choose to do is line your inner line. Again, I would do this with brown rather than black. I just think it's much better for daytime. It's less harsh. Um, it doesn't wash you out as much and it's just a lot more subtle. Um, so you're just lining the actual waterline of the eye. Um, I've kind of got used to this now, so it really doesn't make my eyes water at all. But it just adds a little bit more drama to the whole look. Okay, so that's the eyes pretty much done. You've just got mascara left to add on, also eyebrows. Now I have recently tried microblading on my eyebrows so there will be a video coming all about this very soon so I really don't need much eyebrow product at all which is amazing but what I am using is the Benefit Cabral so this is a gel you can just use the brush that comes with it um, now what I would normally do is brush my brows up before I put any product in but I didn't come prepared and I don't have the brush so I'm just gonna go straight in with this product. Now this, you're just wiping it on. You're kind of doing upward strokes. And this I like because it's really, it's a, it's a really great color for my brows. I don't actually know what the color is. It doesn't, oh no, it's, it's number five. And it's really easy to correct if you go slightly overboard, which I just did. And it's subtle, and I don't like brows to dominate the whole face or makeup. So you can see before and after, I, have, I might have made this one a little bit too thick. But you can see a definite difference between the two. So I'm going to go in and do the other one. You don't need much product on the brush at all for this. You really do want minimal. It does really help brushing the brows up first before you put any product on because if you do have quite long brows like me with the occasional straggler hanging down, then it uh, definitely helps brushing them up first because they do just stay in place a lot better. So brows and eyes done, it's just mascara left. So I'm gonna go in with the Burberry. This is their Burberry Cat Lashes, and this is in shade one, which is jet black. This mascara is really, really good. It's got like a weird double bubble brush. But I find that this just kind of does a bit of everything. It lengthens, it volumizes, it curls. And with mascara, I always look down into a mirror and kind of zigzag it up. With this one, there's always quite a lot on the brush. Um, now with the, the lashes on the end, I wouldn't zigzag, I would just try and grab them. Because otherwise this can clump. But I think you can see quite a big difference already, just from doing the top lashes. With the bottom lashes, I always just kind of wiggle it through them, just using the tip, and then just clean up after. You kind of don't want to pump the brush in as well. The amount of people I see kind of pumping away on the brush, 
You just want to bring it out and kind of try and scrape off as much product as possible. So once you've finished the eyes, you can go back in if there's any areas you want to correct. You know, I, I might put a little bit more shadow just on the corners. Um, so you just go back in with that brush. And I'm just going to put, now that I've got my lashes curled up, you can see more kind of where the line of, lines of the eyes are. So I'm just going to go back in on that corner and just put a little bit more. And then again, just blend that so that there's no harsh lines. So, eyes completely done. We're going to go back to skin. So obviously all I've done is foundation and concealer. So then we want to bronze and blush and highlight and contour and all of that. And then end with lipstick. I always do lipstick as the final step. So, I'm going to do a little bit of highlighter. So this is the highlighter that I mixed with the foundation, the Armani one. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of this on my hand, I think. And I'm just going to actually pat this on, like bounce this on with the Beauty Blender. I'm just going to do it on the cheeks, down the bridge of the nose. So this is only going to be really subtle. I'm not making this really noticeable because this is, or at least was supposed to be a daytime look. I'm going to put that on the top of the cupid's bow as well. Now, I hadn't used this highlighter before, but it is, it is quite subtle. You could probably go in with quite a lot more of this, but you can kind of see it here on the cheekbone. Now, highlighter done, I'm going to do some powder. Now, I actually met Laura Mercier last week at an event. It was the 20th anniversary of the brand. And it was kind of celebrating the most iconic of all the products. And I had never used the translucent powder before. And I am now completely converted. She showed me a couple of tricks to do with it as well. Um, so you tap a little bit into the lid. And then with any sort of puffy brush, it's not a puffy brush at all, it's a puff, I think. You kind of, you're putting this onto the product and you're then actually like massaging it into the puff. And then pat off the excess on your hand and then you're just going down the T-zone really where you might get a bit of shine. Now, I really don't have dry skin at the moment. If anything, it's dehydrated. So um, I don't want much of this at all and I wanted this to be a really luminous look. I'm now gonna do some bronzer. So my favorite, favorite bronzer at the moment, which I'm using every day, is the Hourglass. This is the Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Luminous Bronze Light. Now, it looks like this. And I'm using a very old Clinique brush. Now, I quite like to apply a lot of this because I'm pale at the moment for me and I like a tan. So, if you've watched any of my other videos, I did pick up quite a good tip for bronzer from SJ Froome, who is the Bare Minerals makeup artist. And it's kind of to apply it in a, in, a th in a three shape, really. I mean, I'm doing a very, very weird, distorted three shape at the moment, but you get the drift. You're kind of going round the head, round the cheek, underneath the jawbone, and repeating it on the other side. So up into the hairline on the forehead, underneath. A pet hate of mine as well is seeing white necks and then brown faces. So I always pr bring my bronzer down onto my neck as well. And down the bridge of the nose, slightly on the chin and the center of the forehead. So bronzer done. I lo absolutely love Hourglass um, products at the moment, and I'm actually going to use one of their blushes as well. Now this is their, this is quite an old palette, but it's their, I think it's just their ambient lighting blush palette. So there's three shades in this palette. 
and I'm going to use the Luminous Flash shade, which is this lilac-y one on the end. Now, this is quite a subtle shade compared to the others. I mean, I think I'm just quite hot at the moment, so it's made me look quite rosy. But this will go down, we hope. So blush done, the final step of the autumn makeup look is lipstick. Now I am going to use a berry colour for this just because it's autumnal. And this is the Estee Edit, this is their mattified lipstick in marooned. So this is a very purple, kind of dark purpley red. Now with this, I don't really wear really dark or really red lipstick. So I'm going to apply this and, and then really pat it in so it's more of like a a bitten look, I guess. So I am going to apply it from the bullet of the lipstick, but not too neatly. And I'm not going to apply it on the bottom of my lips. I'm just going to press it down and then with my finger, just go in and blot it. But with the, the bud of your finger, you can actually slightly push it up. So it also exaggerates the shape of your lip. And this is all without needing a brush at all. Now you can do this with a much darker lipstick with more of a kind of plum color. This is, this is redder than I actually thought it was gonna be. But you're just push, you're pressing it into the lip as much as you can really. And kind of blurring the lines as well, it's really not precise around the edges. If you prefer your lipstick to be a lot more pristine than this, then you, you definitely want to use a brush. Um, I'm actually trying to block this as much as I can. Now just to finish off the look, definitely I would only do this for evening. You can just go in with a highlighting shade. Now I'm probably going to use this pop colour from the Urban Decay palette. And I'm just going to go in with a tiny little brush. And I'm just going to pop this in the corner of the eyes. And this just makes them stand out. And this is good for evening. Okay, so that is your autumn makeup look, or that is my autumn makeup look anyway. Um, you can adapt it slightly for daytime or for evening. This, now with the amount of makeup I've got on, this is definitely the evening version. For daytime, you could apply a lot, le a lot less lipstick and just blot it even more so that it's, it's really just subtle stain. This is quite bright now. This is definitely more than I would ever wear in the middle of the day. Um, and the eyes, again, you don't have to put the color on the edges and that could be better for daytime. But yeah, this is my autumn makeup look, which I do hope you enjoyed. Please do leave me any feedback. Give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Any comments, I will definitely get back to you. And please check back soon for more videos.